Miss Linda Mason. that he telephoned you at your mother's home that Saturday evening, June the 25th, and asked you what time you were coming home on the Sunday, the following day. He did, yes. Did you find that strange? Yes. I know this is a very painful subject, Mrs. Eden, but will you say why? Yes. I wasn't intending to return at all, and Ken knew that. You had separated from him. Well, certainly we were going to remain apart for quite some time. At least, so I intended. But on this Saturday evening, the day you'd left, he phoned you and asked you to go back the next day. The upshot of which was that you returned on the Sunday afternoon. Yes. Was there a condition attached to your return? By you, I mean. Did he offer you an undertaking of some sort? Yes, he, he promised to give up seeing a certain person. Yes. Well, I am, of course, not going to ask you to name the person, Mrs. Eden, but can you say a little more about them? I... She was the wife of one of his business associates. They'd been having an affair which had been going on and on for a long time, causing great distress to her husband and young children for, well, about six months at that time, I think. It was a very, well, what would you call it, a very engrossing affair, was it? Very much so. He was deeply infatuated with her. And he'd become, well, we'd both become, well, more or less total strangers because of it. He had no interest in you as a person, are you saying? Yes. He had no interest in me, or anything, or anyone else for that matter, at all at that time. He was completely obsessed with her. Now, you went back home, as you said, on the Sunday afternoon. When did he first tell you that he was going to be charged with these offences for which he is now standing trial? Later that evening, the Sunday evening. And do you remember what your reaction was? Yes. We'd been drinking a little and quarrelling, and when he first said it, I, I just laughed. I, I couldn't believe what he was saying. I, I thought he was just trying to get sympathy for himself from me. You didn't think that it was possible that he was going to be charged with assaulting or trying to assault Barbara? I thought it was completely absurd. Because, oh, well, perhaps you'll tell us yourself why because, will you? Well, she was so young, and because he was so completely wrapped up with Jack, with this other woman that it just had to be absurd. But gradually you realised that he meant it. He really was going to be charged. Well, only after I'd talked to... I'd talked to Inspector Cripps and he told me that it was true and then I realised how serious it was. Serious? In what way, Mrs Eden? Well, there'd been no one there in the house. And I knew as well as he that Barbara had had for a, a long time a sort of schoolgirl thing about him. I just knew that if she wanted to, she could make things look very bad for him. Do you believe that there could be anything whatsoever in such an allegation as she has made about your husband, Mrs Eden? No, of course they couldn't. It's utterly preposterous. And finally, just briefly, Mrs Eden, before you got to know Barbara, was there someone else who came to your home? Another girl for a short time to whom you and your husband were unofficial aunt and uncle? Uh, yes, I, I believe there was, but... It, it didn't last. She only came for a brief time. Linda Mason. Yes, that's right. That was her name, yes. And she, too, is making the same sort of allegation against your husband, saying he was always trying to get her into a corner and so on. Did not, you know that? No. No. No, I, I didn't know that, no. But you'd say the same thing, would you, that knowing your husband, the suggestion would be quite preposterous? Oh, yes. I'm sure I would. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Eden. 
Mrs. Eden, I think we all noticed something which sounded rather like a marked lack of conviction in your tone of voice when you answered that last question. And I'm wondering whether... With respect, Your Honour, I do not think that my learned friend should be let pursue that. Mr. Eden is not charged with any offences regarding Linda Mason. With equal respect, Your Honour, excuse me, I would point out that it was uh, my learned friend herself who introduced this subject into the cross-questioning of her witness. Your Honour, it was the prosecution who brought Linda Mason into this case in the first place. Miss Travers, Mr. maitland Bilson, I was going to say myself that I thought perhaps that this was a subject which should not be taken too far. So may we now continue from there, please, Mr. maitland Wilson. Your Honour. <coughs> now, uh, are you all right, Mrs. Eden? Yes. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I just don't seem able to think. I'm sorry. You see, it, it really is. It's all my fault. If only I'd been a, a better wife, and none of this would ever have happened. Um, yes. Well, I think I have no further questions for this witness, madam. Uh, Mrs. Eden, you and your husband are in fact separated again at this moment, are you not? Yes. Yes, we are. So there is no personal gain for you in coming to give evidence as you have done on his behalf? No. That's right, yes, no. no. Thank you, Mrs. Eden. Thank you, Mrs. Eden. You may leave the witness box. That is the case for the defence, Your Honour.